We're live. It is uh, 625, looks like, or something like that. Uh, ho hopefully my, um, I don't know if my clock's right there, my truck, because I had, did have to work on the, uh, let's see if we can come down just a little bit here. There we go. Um, I don't know if my clock's right, because I had to work on the connection for the battery last night, so I played with a little bit of stuff. Uh, what's going on with the truck is when I, it seemed like that the, the bolt holding the, the lug holding the power lead to the battery seemed like that was either bottomed out or it was stripped. So I replaced it and cleaned everything up, got it tight and it starts right up. It's nice. But then when I let the truck sit for a while, um, like overnight, then it doesn't want to start. All I got to do is go over and wiggle it. It's not loose or anything, but if I wiggle it, then it starts right up. So I don't know if it's, what do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think um, for the LS guys out there. This is a 5.3 in a Silverado. But does it have a short or something? Is, is it draining the battery at night? You know, just let me know what you guys think. But tonight we're going to talk about um, like kits. So I, I have cams available. I got some inexpensive cams, $169 right now. They're on sale. Plus I got some used ones that I'm, a bunch of used ones that I'm bringing home. I got a lot of stuff. But uh, I'm gonna start. I'm, I'm gonna start to get a get a uh, website up and a store. And so, I, but I want to know what you guys want because I only want to do this if uh, <laughs> I've been resisting this for so long. People have been telling me, "Yeah, you need to go do this," and I haven't wanted to do it. Um, mostly, I just didn't know if I wanted to be in this kind of business, but because I like I like testing. But I figure I can combine the two. So what I want to do is only offer the things that I test. So things that I know work. Hey, look here, this thing does this. If you if you're looking for it, hey, we'll we'll find out if that's you know if that's what you want. That's what you want. Here's what it does. That way I can give good information and and sell good products. I'm not going to sell junk. Um, there's, I, I already there's so many things that I would not offer. But but I, so I want to see what what I'm thinking about is I want to put together. The things that I get asked about a lot on these live feeds and in the comments is, you know, what what's the best cam, what's the best turbo, whatever, what can I use? So guys want to know, well, what turbo do you use when you do that? What what cam shaft did you use when you did that? What and and uh, oddly enough, I get I get asked the injector question a lot. So let me know in the comments, should I should I put combinations together with a cam and it, like if you want to make 700 horsepower, use this cam, this turbo, these injectors. What else would you want to see in something like that? Would you um, would you like to see springs maybe included in that? So just to make life, you know, a one-stop shopping thing to make life easier. And so I can source all of that stuff and, and get good, you know, pieces to try. Um, obviously, I've been using the GT45 turbo, so that probably would be one of the, one of the mainstays. Obviously, an S475 for higher horsepower, stuff like that. Maybe some things like that. And so let me know what you guys want. You know, let me know what you guys want to see. And so I can start. Obviously, I need to get merchandise up there. I need to get shirts and stuff. And I, I, and I will definitely be doing that. Um, but right now, it'll it'll start out with um, cams. And so when I get home and, and sometime between now and when I got to go to um, the uh, LS Fest West, that... You know, I'm just trying to get stuff done. Um, I got, got lots of dyno testing that I want to do, and that's not going to stop. I'm going to keep doing that. I want to get all of that stuff done, or or as much of it as I can, and then um, that way, when because what happens is is is, uh, and I, my friends and I have talked about this a lot. I get a lot of calls and comments and questions about, hey, look, you you did this test on this thing, and like, you know, how can I how can I duplicate that? And so they want to know that, and so I just want to try to facilitate that so rather than tell people hey look the information just on the video go follow the video and go buy all those things randomly if they're all together a guy could just go get it i think i think it'll make it easier for everybody so let me know what you guys think but that's kind of the plan um i'm looking longingly at the v6 that we talked about today um i do want to i do want to run that so i'm going to see about trying to buy that um there's also maybe a, a Gen 2 LT1 that I could get my hands on, which would be good. Let me know if you want to see that. Um, what else? Uh, what else we got going on? I'm working on the LS. Uh, naturally, when you're just like all you guys, when you are working on a project car or whatever, it's just nonstop trips to the auto parts store. And for me, a lot of times, 
the bolt store because I have to get because of the the blower assembly and stuff. And now we've now we have right now what I have is a bigger spacer between the plate and the tick intercooler to run the M90 on, which have been ported by the guys at Joker. So lots of good guys involved in this, but it means that all the bolts have to be replaced. <laughs> and these are um, uh, quarter twenties, I think. And none of the, or at least our local bolts are, which is McFaddendale, which is really good for stuff. They just didn't have long enough um, because the bolts are countersunk. Um, they didn't have long enough Allen head bolts for what we were trying to do. So, <laughs> so you, you got to find workarounds, take a couple trips back and forth, get stuff done. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, you know, lots of, lots of cool stuff. I'm excited about running that blower again after, now that it's ported. I'm excited about getting the tick intercooler to actually, uh, to be able to utilize everything that it has to offer. I got a spacer plate, talked to Tom Demuse today, uh, who's been fantastic about sending out a bunch of stuff. Um, might be working with him on some little trinkets and stuff, some 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 super richy bottle openers, that kind of stuff. So it would be cool. And they, and they would be of the Billity variety, so they would be, yes, chock full of Billity goodness. That's good stuff. So let me know some other stuff. Obviously, you know, stickers and all that, all that normal kind of things. But I, I kind of also want to do, uh, you know, weird stuff. I, I want to do other things that that people aren't offering, um, you know. So there, hopefully, it'll all work out good. So let me know what kind of questions you guys have. I'm going to see some of the responses and see what you guys are recommending. Love your videos. They are incredibly helpful. Good, David. I'm I'm happy that they are. Rich, what's going on, Martin? Uh, bad heavy wires in the grounds. I, I think that that I think that the main power wire or the main ground wire um, might be bad. I'm I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is while I'm here at West Tech and I might do it tonight. We'll see. Um, I've I brought my little whizzy wheel and so I'm gonna you know clean all of the paint or gunk off of it, off of all the grounds. Put them back on there and see what happens. Um, maybe one of the cells is going bad on the battery. Although the thing is when I drive this thing around, when it, when it's during the day, this thing just fires right up and there's no problems ever. But when I go to sleep at midnight and wake up at seven or whatever, um, and go to start it, it does that. And like I said, I've cleaned off the posts and everything. And so I, I don't think it's a connection problem, at least not at the battery anyway. So I don't know. We'll see. Wrong cam shirts. Yep, definitely. I've yet to check your reply on what, what's my reply, Bob, on what? Loosen it, rotate it 20, tighten it up again. Uh, I have, we've tried different positions on it, but that's not, that doesn't seem to be the position. I know that when we tighten those in, They've got little dimples on them that push into the battery. And so I could see how that could get loose. I even trimmed away the rubber around the grommet so that that's not holding it back. It shouldn't because there's a nice recess for that to go in. I just was trying to figure it. Does the car have separate earth? Separate earth potentials? It has multiple grounds, if that's what you're talking about. Corrosion in the crimp. Can't see it, but it's there. I have liver it. <laughs> I'm scrolling back. I gotta go back. I'm, I gotta go back back to the beginning. Vicente said, go back to the beginning. Let's see here. Here, this cam lifters didn't eat themselves <laughs> during breaking. So you want you want flat tap and stuff? 85 notch, what's up? That would be cool options and a way to pocket a bit of extra scratch. Yeah, it would be nice to be able to have money that I can, you know, do more dyno testing. Zoo truck, hope you got my PayPal and message. You rock, dude. Keep up the good work. See how much power could a TRX2 intake support on a 540 before it becomes a restriction? I'd have to look and see. I, I, I'm thinking that Brulee has probably run that on a, on a 
good sized big block. LS Boost Pack Conversion Kit. <laughs> there you go. I gotta come up with clever names, huh? Engine is in the Mustang ish. My motor mounts are wrong. The distributor's hitting the firewall. That's not good. Could you hit a thousand horsepower with a 4.3? I don't think so with a stock bottom end. Let's see here. My uh, captions are kind of freaking out. Have you done anything with the Volvo 2.5? I have not. My 2008 does the same thing with a battery cable. Todd, Richard, if I were to get my engine ready, can you, for you, can I deliver it to you down south? Would that work for you? Not, you mean right now? I, I, I can't run it right now. But I can get it when I come back and then take it down next time. Do a junkyard 500 horsepower all motor. I, I already did that. That the look at the L30. Look what we did to the L33. It's a junkyard L33 bottom end, all of that stock. But to get 500 horsepower, you have to on all motor. You have to have head scam and intake manifold and pretty good ones. Richard, tech question and ready. Roughly at what power level does an ATI crank damper become a necessity? I, I don't know that it does. Um, the We use the factory dampers on, on a lot of stuff, and I don't know if it's a power or RPM thing. Um, they're a good idea, and they're a lot better than the factory stuff, but I don't know about it being mandatory. Wrong cam shirts? Yes, definitely. McFaddendale, they've been a lifesaver in Vegas. Yeah, we I used to go to the one in Vegas, too. They and and I mean they're everywhere and they're they're really good stuff. Yeah, a thousand horsepower in a four three. I I don't know. I don't know about the crankshaft in this. Corrosion in the crimp can't see it, but it's there. A cold battery will make less voltage. Yeah, but not like it's never had a problem before, and that's that's what I mean. It, that's why it's weird. Still have good weather even at night. Yeah, I think it's 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 beautiful today. It was seventy today, I think. Reply on four three parts. Oh, I don't I don't need any stock four three parts. That that motor's really together. Just needs valve covers, I think. You could sell the random bits for fabbing sheet metal intakes, horns, tubes, sheets, flanges. Okay. The problem with my truck, the wire to the starter from the solenoid to the starter motor is cording or only has a few strands left. That's not good. Slow drain on the battery, low power in the mornings, charges back up when driven. So do you, I, I'm wondering what the slow drain would be on the battery, though. That's what I'm wondering. Is it a, is it a short somewhere? I, there's nothing on. None of the lights are on or anything. Also get with Demus for M90 adapters for us, your truck, and film the dyno. Really like to see a 4.8 on a 500 shot of nitrous. It it won't take that. Uh, Darren, the truck doesn't need a starter. The, the starter works good. The wire's probably corroded inside the connection. Yeah, I, w it wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. I have a similar issue with my 05 Sierra, and it was in the computer. The, the regulator circuit or something sold the truck to a buddy before I figured it out. Are Delphi LS7 lifters reputable? I don't know. I don't know which... I have to ask Brian about that. I'm not too familiar with the different versions of the LS7. Had the exact same thing happen. It was the battery terminal. I fought it for a couple months before I figured it out. Doesn't mean their problem is... Yeah. I. It wouldn't surprise me if the battery's bad. The battery's about three years old, I think. What should I expect drivability wise on a built ported 243 BTR stage four truck V2 408 stroker? The 408 stroker is gonna help that, but a stage four truck cam is not is not terribly drivable. I mean, it's the, the idle quality and stuff is not gonna be great. 
Just make up stage kits, starting cam or cam and springs, and move to heads and cam and intake. I don't, I don't know about heads right now. I just I just don't know how I don't know how popular that's going to be. Personally, I think everything you share is great. Four three on a heavy dose of nitrous. I can easily run nitrous on it. I like cams that are way freaking big for the application. Cam springs turbos. Do you think once electric fails that rotary valves will become a thing in production vehicles? I, I don't think rotary valves will ever be a production thing. 1,000 horsepower to 4.3, you need 50 pounds of boost. You need a good roller, 302 for his Fox. I, I have a roller for that. 41 degrees in Sloppy Central. Here's a good one. Richard fell asleep last night. Absolutely exhausted this morning. Tossed laundry in. Heard a bang, bang in the dryer. Checked out. It was 42 pound injector. That's nice. Have you tested super thin rings versus standard rings? Total still shows tests showing pretty significant gains. 20 degree lower operating temperature. Uh, I, I believe whatever Lake Speed says, because he's a really, really sharp guy. And, and I love Lake. He's not only that, he's a great guy. Um, I'm wondering what the temperature is. Um, is it is it uh, a loss in friction, and then that's transmitted to the to the water temp? I just don't know how the water temp would change if the water is circulating and is running on the um, on the thermostat. So I'd have to talk to Lake about that. But thinner rings definitely can make more power. We've we've tested that stuff, but usually you have to have the um, oh, oh no, I was talking about the. Uh, you have to have the right rings to get a vacuum uh, pump to really to really show good gains. But I think rings do. And I'd actually like to do a ring test. I talked to Lake about that. Sometimes stereos, alarms, and other chassis can ca ca cause slow drains. Turn off the truck. Disconnect the positive terminal. Run an amp meter between the battery and the positive terminal and look for current. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, this all this has all factory stuff, so th there's no aftermarket stereo, there's no aftermarket alarm, there's no anything. The only thing that I do have plugged into it is this. <laughs> this my plug for my thing. It has a little LED light, but I, I don't think that I don't think that that would cause a short. Bad batteries will drain internally sometimes. I would try a couple of ground straps. I do. I want to run grounds. Like, I'd, I wouldn't be opposed to running more grounds. Mohammed, thank you very much. I'm looking to make 500 NA all motor with a 5.3, 243 heads, 218, 224 cam. So, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> 218 cam is 20 degrees too small for that. Low, I can load test the battery. I can take that in. I've never seen someone raving about their boosted 4.3 V6 Dominator race class. <laughs> Is it popular aftermarket parts? No, no it's not, Jeff. Um, or Jet. Is it Jet? Yeah. Um, it, it's not popular. There's There are no, like, well, Brodex made some aluminum heads for it, but they're hard to find. But there's not a lot of stuff for it. <laughs> Is it possible to buy a single complete turbo kit on eBay? One of those thousand dollar kits wanted to know after install, could the system live on a mild 318? I, the a a a R, um, the thing that I don't know is I don't know about fitment on those. I have no idea what kit it is, but if you can route all the exhaust to the turbo and you position the turbo so that it's not burning anything, then that part of it is all good. If the turbo is size big enough for what you're doing, then all of that works good. And like the guys from HP Performance sold lots and lots of turbo kits. And if the guy, if those guys did their job, um, it should last a long time. I would do a ground strap straight to the frame and one to the body. The, it already has one going to the frame from the factory, but I, I would, wouldn't be opposed to doing another one. What's your go-to lifter for a 5.3 for under $300? My go-to lifter are the ones that came with the wrecking yard motor so far. I don't replace them. My junkyard engine had LS3 style lifters and the LS7 style lifters were the only ones I saw for sale when I looked. 
They all threw three open by roller. I don't know what that means. But all of the motors that we get from the wrecking yards have lifters in them, and we run them. Cam springs, turbo setup. Low buck injector, turbo cam and springs for sure, maybe intercooler. I don't know about the low buck injector thing. I don't know. Uh, other than the 80s, I don't know what else you would, would you put in there. There's a mechanism on my 125 camshaft that I thought was an automatic decompression. Turns out it's backfire relief. Oh, cool. What would be a good aggressive NA cam for a 408 stroker trying to maintain decent Sunday cruise drivability with a decently aggressive idle? Or were True Shock, were you the one that asked about the stage four cam? Because it will have it will have an aggressive idle. Uh, Dan, did you have a question about gapless rings? You know, or coyote stuff? I have no coyotes, so I can't run any coyote stuff. Do you know anything about a G27 turbo? I don't. Low test the battery, it's three years old. I bought one of the plugs once that was... I bought one of the plugs that was shorted. It, it charges, I can see the charging on it. Um, and it has a little LED light, but an LED light should do nothing. I mean, <laughs> bad alternator can be a draw. Will the bad alternator be a draw when it when it's shut off? Uh, Borderland, what size what do I recommend? Can't scroll back up. Um, rotary valves have tried the the guy the coats guy that that I guess designed the rotary valve maybe somebody else did but he's the one that we always saw at SEMA he tried for years and years and years to get people interested in it but I don't think it's going to be a thing just make my four my four three Astro van fast Cyclone was the fastest production vehicle in the early nineties it, it was the quickest it was not anywhere near the fastest. Most of the time, Silverado, either bad battery or rectifier in the alternator. Okay. I have an engine for you, Richard. I'm not joking. 5.3 LT engine. I'm thinking big bang test. The problem with that is getting enough fuel to it. And and thanks, but I, I have an L83 already. I'll take an eBay kit over an on three I got for the small block board. Did, did that not work? I, I don't, I don't, you don't normally test kits, so I don't know how well they, I don't know how they will, how well they do. Let's see if I can change my, my lighting a little bit. Come down a little bit on the lighting. There we go. That's, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's going to be super annoying. <laughs> Let's see if I can get my other lights on. Those are soft lighting, soft lighting. But 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I read an article on Hot Rod or like about the rotary valve head design someone was working on as difficult system to make work. Still not available. Yeah, it's been around a while. Um, and, and, and it is a really cool idea. And you would think that, hey, that's going to solve all the problems. But it's still hard to get um, the airflow to work on a rotary valve. Uh, Danny, how do I check the rectifier on the alternator? A 224-230. It's not too small if you want drivability. I did. I brought a light. That's right. Should do video on your razor blade rebuild for a tired... I have lots of razor blade rebuild videos up. Also curious if you knew any good 480 rebuild brands. I don't. Um, I got my transmission in this truck from Summit, um, and so far it's worked good. Oh, Eric, the on the on the rectifier. If you pull the fuses one at a time. You can isolate the circuit that's drawing on the battery. Oh, if I oh if I. Uh, disconnect the 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 power and 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 put the connector between them okay 
multimeter on the diode mode. Okay. Between it and alternator with an ohmmeter. Okay. I'll check both of those. I have to get in diode mode. <laughs> I think the battery's, I think it's three years old. Maybe maybe when Mark gets back, I'll, I'll see if he has a if he has a good fluke meter we can use. I've been subscribed since you lost your job. <laughs> that goes back. That goes back a little ways, a couple years now. Richard, I have a question. With thinner headers, do you hear valves tick more? Sound is heard more under the driver wheel well. This is after Beehive Springs and new lifters. Thinner headers, like compared to sock exhaust manifolds? It might it might be more noticeable with that. It might be more noticeable with headers. Are you sure you're not hearing an exhaust leak? Probably just the battery there on what they used to do. Planning on towing the GH home, I would fly out and rent a U-Haul to tow it. Yep. An alternator can draw when shut off if the field still has power. Okay. A quick check is with the ignition off. See if something steel will stick to the shaft at the pulley. Oh, will it will it still be magnetic? That's a good idea. As I've grown older, I've noticed three years is more like five or six. <laughs> or six tends to be ten. The alternator field has power. It will be magnetic. Okay. So either the um, the alter the steel alternator pulley or the um, shaft that it's on those those will both be magnetic, right? Used to work at a battery shop a million years ago, Western Auto. We replaced a lot of three year old batteries after charging and load testing them. Even expensive sixty month batteries. Could it be corrosion in the positive uh, terminal. Yeah, not not in the. It could be in the. It, not in the terminal lead. I, I've already done that. But it could be in the wire itself. Buy a two hundred watt one ohm resistor. Put it in line and measure the voltage across the resistor. Which indicated is actually the current in the cable. Okay. Just got back from looking over a 1K cart collection. 90% of them were burnt. Did they come from the fires? I've seen people on YouTube run LT engines on carburetors. Yeah, you can run them as port injection too, but then there's no reason to do an LT motor. <laughs> Do you clean the lifters on junkyard motors before doing testing? No, we just put them on the dyno and put oil in it and run it. The L33 just went up on the dyno and ran, and then that's where it's <laughs> that's where it's had its whole life. Um, it would be really nice to take it apart and clean it, but it's worked really well so far. My buddy's commissioned to crush him. Okay. For a lady, I think Allison is the transmission of choice behind the 8.1 stuff. Especially for guys that are um, boosting it. I missed the gist of the alternator. I worked a starter and alternator. What's the problem? The the symptoms are on the truck is it runs fine during the day and I've cleaned out the battery terminals and the positive and negative wires and stuff. But then 
overnight, when I go to start it, it won't start. But if I just move the wires, and they're still tight, they're not loose. If I just move them, the car, the truck starts right up. Worst case, plop a generator, battery charger, and junk battery in the box, long cables to under the hood. I drove 200 odd miles like that with a dead alternator. Yeah, the alternator's not bad. I mean, it's charging. I can, I can see that on the, um, on the voltmeter. What would cause that tick after warm-up, but not on cold start? I, I don't know. The years, of, the truck is a 2002. I don't, I can't, it's really hard for me to address a lifter tick from not hearing it or seeing it or knowing all the things about it. Are you following the C8 with the 8.1? Yeah, that's cool. That's a, that's a lot of work. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so when you say you can't get enough fuel, what's the limitation high pressure pump or the injectors? Can you not run like an LT4 injectors and maybe a different pump? The problem is that you, the problem is all of that. The problem is that you have to put really big injectors in it, especially if you're running good fuel like E85 or methanol because it requires even more fuel. You have to put a really big pump in it and getting that stuff is very, it uh, might not be available at all. And if it is, it's very, very, very expensive. Cause it's not like going and buying injectors for an, L, uh, an LS motor because that, <laughs> that's very easy. But on an LT motor, it's not. There we go. Now I got some light. Let's see if I can turn these off. Yeah, that's still, that's still fine. Although that, Shine. Is that shine back there? Not really, huh? Ooh, now it's now it's scary, Richie. Sounds like a cooked wire from a resistor due to a bad connection. This is a huge issue in motorcycle restoration. Wire fatigue from the heat cycling. So do you think it's um we were talking about the uh the alternator possibly? I just replaced both battery cables and it stopped. Cool. It will charge fine with a bad rectifier diode. 408 stroker with twin turbo GT35. What compression ratio would you suggest for 93 pump gas? Uh, like nine to one or something. I want the carb from you that can only feed like 300 cubic inches. What, what carburetor are you talking about? And, and carburetors don't feed cubic inches, they, they feed horsepower. That sounds like a cooked wire from the resistance due to a bad connection. Yeah, another live from the truck because I'm down at West Tech and West Tech doesn't have good, um, they don't <laughs> have good internet connection. If you have a connection that's bad, it will build heat and cook over time, fatiguing more and losing uh, connectivity. Okay. Have you me measured the resistance of the cables? There could be a spot where the insulation of the cable was cut and corrosion may have eaten the conductor. I've not, I've not done any of that. Test what cams like solid lifters and what cams don't and any cams you don't, and any cams that don't, you don't sell. The Edelbrock, it's on a shelf. It, um, was that a 500 or something or 600? When would a tunnel ram become a restriction on, on a 540, that TRX? I don't know. I was going to see if Brulee has run one of those. He probably has. <laughs> on Star Spying on this live. Pulled the insulation off the cables and they're both green all the way down. Pop a new battery in and all your troubles will be over. Do you have a job? 
We'd love to have you as a greeter for Walmart. Thanks, Walmart. New cars are well protected with fuse, fuses these days from catastrophic burn downs, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, you said Silverado would start if you move the cable. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not moving the I'm not moving the connection where it's connected to the battery. All I do is just move the cable a little bit. Um, so maybe if I move it down lower and it still does the same thing, maybe that's an indication on that it's down lower. We had a winch on our trailer where the copper inside the battery cables literally turned to dust. Cut open a perfectly good looking battery. Oh, cat cable is nothing but green powder inside. It wouldn't surprise me if it was like that. Replace the cables, clean the connections. Wrong camshaft. I can't let you in. Yep. Ooh, it's starting to get dark, huh? Richie after dark. Mr. Camshaft. Super, <laughs> Super Richie's home is cheap camshafts. Now I think I get to go over to see Mahovitz at Acufab. He's gonna he's milling out a plate for me so for the uh, it's a spacer plate for the um, the tick intercooler for the supercharger. <laughs> super super brulee is a dino king. Yep, he's the carb whisperer. If you trace your positive battery cable further down, does it lead to a little red junction box? Yeah, I can check that, uh, CJ. I haven't checked that. It does have that. It does have that little plastic box on it. I, I think um, I should, Vincent Price should be playing in the back. Get a little thriller action going. If it starts after wiggling the cable, just replace the cable. I'll do all of those are good ideas. So we'll we'll do a, a load test on the battery. We'll do a diode test on the alternator, and then we'll check the battery cables. Because I it starts when I move the. I need to do this test tomorrow if it does it again. I need to see if I can um, make it start by wiggling the. I normally wiggle the power wire, but I need to see if I can do it wiggling the ground. Still plan on making Fox body suspension upgrades. Yeah, actually, it was, I talked to Bart about that, and he wants to do his double A arm. I know, Vincent who? Yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio, would they know who that is? Changed a lot of battery cables on GM trucks from 2000 up. Should be a factory recall. Have you heard of the big three upgrade that car audio guys do? I have not. <laughs> it's because it has it's because it doesn't have boost bob that's right i now i need to go into rock auto and see how much these battery cables cost although I, we're going to do some diagnosing first double ground from the alternator yeah i that's what when i did the trunk mounted battery in my mustang that's what we use we used the welding cable on it was good All the 4 stroker kits I've looked at with 64cc chambers, the lowest I can get is 9.8. Okay. Well, you can you can put a 70cc head on it. This isn't the truck you tested the M90 on. It is. It's, I only have one truck. Yeah, it's, it looks really cool to my neighbor who has a... Um, I think she's got a 72 or 73 Mustang with a Cle a four-barrel Cleveland. It's all original. It's a convertible. So I was over talking to her about it. And then I'm supposed to be the car guy. And I, every morning I have to walk out and pop the hood on my <laughs> Silverado and wiggle the wire so I get to start. I, I would think you get... You should be able to get lower compression than that. But somewhere in the nines would probably be fine. Guys are running that on. Guys are running that on 93. 
even four barrel wide open throttle. I know. And that that what kills me is that's the same motor that I got in the wreck yard that I could have gotten in the wrecking yard. How many hours do you work when you're there? Uh, I usually work till 11 or 12 at night, every night. 9.8 is with 20 cc dish pistons. That's quite a bit. Most guys on a 408 would have a, um, a, a, a rec port head on it or a 317 based head on it so that, so that the chamber is much bigger. Found an L77 from a 13 police interceptor, only 175,000 miles, had cam issues. Any weird issues of swapping this versus an LS1? An L77 is, a, um, is still an LS family, right? Big three wouldn't hurt. What, what is big three? So somebody explain that to me. <laughs> there you go, Steve. I like that. Points for that. Took a string through the... Hook a string through the hood so you can just wiggle it from the inside. That's good. Electric water pump kind of scares me on a car, which will see street use. I know that's awesome. That's easy. That's, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna put a little tag on it that says "Wiggle me." <laughs> Gotta wiggle it. Can we get some more light in here? Eh, it doesn't really do too much, right? I think I brought the little shop light, man. It's all getting it done. So when I get back, I gotta go. I'm gonna go see a Mahovitz and get that thing milled out, and I'll try to get the LS up on the dyno tonight. The big three is a battery. So power line, battery line, and an alternator cable. Four Eeks have a wiggle test mode for wiring. They do. Next time it won't crank, pull the cover under the hood for the relays and jump 30 to 87 on the starter relay and see if it will crank. Okay. Built a 71 Torino once, had more power than the U-bolts and drive shafts can handle. Yeah, basic power and grounds on the hood. Yeah, I can see some of them. I can see some of the grounds that go to the firewall. So I'm going to do those. There's one going, there's the main ones that go down to the block. And then, then there's one going forward. How long am I at West Tech? Uh, through the weekend. I'm going to LS Fest in Vegas this year. Yep. Eight point one is going to be used for extended highway triple digit trips. Yep, just just have it be all stock. I've never heard of a three fifty one of any iteration. I think that that's what was. It wasn't a Torino. I think it was a Ranchero that was in the wrecking yard. Are you stranded? No, I'm not stranded. <laughs> the, the, the car, the truck starts fine. It runs fine. Only in, only in the morning. And even then it's just a wiggle. Most of the big three above. Yeah, I saw that. It's it just changed the, um, the power wire, the ground wire and the alternator wire. Right. Right. I got it. I got it. I'm just going to replace them all with speaker wire. You know, I'll use monster cable. Block directly to the block. Well, if you... What good would it do you to have a battery directly to the from from one part of the block to another part of the block? Oh, frame. Okay, there you go. Uh, I have double O ground for my starter as well. It's 
speaker wire, 16 gauge, perfect. If you live in the vicinity of saltwater, I don't, I don't live in anywhere near saltwater. I live in the, in the valley of central California, not in central California, but northern California, but it's, it's away from the ocean. Nope, no salt water. Auto correctness. So the first shipment of camp should go out tomorrow. The vehicle is a 2002 Silverado. Use oxygen free copper, not copper coated aluminum for your wires. Nathan, new development, turbo LS. If I roll on the throttle, it accelerates smooth. If I stab the throttle, it acts like a two step and then hits, comes on hard. Any ideas where to look? Look at, um, is it, is, do you have a Holly? If you have a Holly, I can try to help you, but if you have a stock ECU, then I don't know what to do. I don't know what to adjust. Yeah, uh, Katie, we're, we were just joking about the speaker wire. Do you have videos of your car collection on your channel? No, I don't have a car collection. I, I have this truck. This is what I drive. <laughs> but I also have a Dodge Omni that, that there are videos on. Uh, 240Z, a 5-liter Mustang. If you can get some wire from an electrical supplier. Ground wire would actually work best if you could run it right to a starter bolt. Do they salt the road in the winter? They don't salt roads where I live. I use the liquid made to repair dishwasher racks to insulate cables. Sounds dumb, but check all the ground points. Yep. Holly, Holly Terminator. Um, look at uh, look at TPS enrichment versus uh, coolant. TPS versus is there a TPS versus time? I don't spend a lot of time on those, but look at look at your acceleration enrichments. That's where I would look at. You see the green screen? It's all it's all dark behind me. Do you think it might be a ground issue? Put jumper cable from the battery to the block and see if it changes anything. Welding supply. I shops have good wire too. Yeah, that's what I got for my my Mustang when I did it. If you're lucky if you live where they don't salt roads. Yeah, that, that salting roads is not something that's done in, in the part of California that I'm at. It, they might do it up in up in Tahoe or somewhere up there, but not where we were not where we are. <laughs> That's right, Dan. It's not a green screen. Hey, uh, good luck with battery cable USA for custom cables or winches. I mean, this thing has 330,000 miles on it. And if it's had a loose connection there at the battery um, or a loose connection somewhere else, that, you know, that battery cable could be bad. The, the stocks, those are the original cables that came with the car, so... I use welding wire for everything, but I'm a low rider. Yeah, that's good for that stuff, huh? Yeah, I didn't think that they did, Dan. Are you offering springs with cams now? I don't have any right now, but but it's something I plan on adding. I've seen battery lugs break inside the battery case. Um, the The bolt tightens up, and that's not moving around. 
You went twice already? D Dan, the, uh, the truck runs fine during the day, but when I go out to start it in the morning, it doesn't want to start. And then if I go out and just grab the wire and move it, it's still tight against the battery and stuff. If I move it, then, then it will start. Yeah, replace the cables. Yeah, I, I just, I want to, I kind of want to figure out which one it is. Um, because I can replace everything. I can replace the battery, I can replace the cables, replace the alternator, <laughs> and fix all the grounds. You know, I could shotgun it, but I don't like doing that. Welding cable, yep. Yeah. Who was it that had the 600 horsepower kit for the big block? That was the guys at um, uh, MPG Heads. They're in Colorado. Or the other name that they have for their CAM stuff is CAM Research Corps. Maybe I'll send a follow-up email. What are your concerns with selling CAMs? Why would I have... Who said I had concerns with selling CAMs? Guess, guess you're still waiting on pieces to try the electric water pump. No, I have the water pump here. Sounds like me. I don't want to start in the morning either. <laughs> Once broke a lug on the interstate battery, trying to free the terminal top post. The lug stayed with the battery, but fell loose and broke off inside. Fix it or get stranded. Yep, just right now we're in diagnostic mode. Stop doing that. Yep, zoo truck, that's right. The the it could be broken inside. Pull out the battery bolt from the cable and clean up the corrosion, put the reds pull the red sleeve off and get it to the metal terminal. You can even soak it in a cup of Coke. I, I did all that already. I use baking soda, um, cut some of the red plastic off to make a good ground, took my little die grinder, ground the battery, ground the, um, the cable lug, tried different bolts, tried a washer. I did, I did all that stuff. And I'm, I'm not sure the battery's okay. We're going to test that. We're going to load test it. Is there a way for you to do a sacrificial anode for electrical connections? Voltage drop test, yep. Dodge Magnum 92 31 18 core is best for regrinds. Less base circle reduction. Baking soda is a base. You need an acid. Well, we, we already have battery acid. Clean the whole battery case with baking soda solution too, yeah. Quite interested in the mileage change or not. Yeah, with electric pump. Me too. Where's the list of stuff you're selling? I, I don't have a list. Once in a while, the bolt at the starter would loosen up. Only, only worked in a Chevy store for longer, <laughs> I can admit. Yeah, I can check that. I'm gonna check the um, the little block, the little red block that goes on the on the power lead. I'll check the bolt on the all. I think I think I checked the bolt on the alternator to make sure that that was tight. I asked him about the five nine Magnum cams. I oh, you wanted to know if I had any? I don't think I do. I'd also like to see parts for sale list. Yeah, I don't I don't have that. I'm, I'm not gonna post a parts for sale list. Coca-Cola is a base too. Yeah, this is up. Building a 408 stroker from a magnum right now. I'm still trying to scroll. How's my light doing? Come on. Get, get some get some light. The red block, yeah, fusible link. Tried white vinegar. 
She just needs boosted. I Dan, I don't have a voltmeter handy right now. I'm in, I'm waiting for Sanchez to get back. I think he's got a good. I think he's got a couple of good ones. Zoo truck, you think it's a battery? No color cycling LEDs in the truck. No, the only one I have is the one, the, the charger that I have for my um, phone. And the aftermarket 5.9 stuff, I don't have any of that. Water heaters have a sacrificial magne magnesium anode. Somebody's looking for a 2.6 Mitsubishi head. We've got two more minutes. Folks buying high billet S400 chassis turbos claim to have a couple hundred more horsepower than a similar spec VS Racing S400 at full tilt. I don't know what you mean by thoughts. You had me right until then. It took me six weeks to get a nostalgia comp cam delivered. That's a long time. Are you on a side post? Is it, are you asking if it's a side post battery? It is. It's not a, it's not a top. Where's my, there's the, we'll go, we'll go to the side that's better. You're changing Duramax HP pumps. In Wisconsin, we find out a bad battery by this phenomenon or your cold winter. Yeah, it gets cold there. It's not cold here, so. I have an extra NA 2.2 cam. Thanks. I think I do. I think I have a TBI cam. Flux capacitor. That's right. <laughs> you don't like GM in their side posts? Make sure you decompress the pressure first. Hard to think it's a battery by just moving the wire and then it starts. I'm like the only guy who likes side posts. I don't think I've ever taken a position on, <laughs> on battery post positions. Pull the bolts out of the terminals and check under the boots for acid. Yeah, it's not that there was stuff on both sides, and both sides of that of that terminal were clean. I ground them, I cleaned them with baking soda and water, and then wiped them off, and then took my little whizzy wheel and ground them all down so you could see copper, and then um, then put the bolts back in. In fact, I put a new bolt in last night because the other one was stripped. What kind of OD pulley ratios are the pro chargers using? Well, if you're using a turbo, you need to design it for the um, RPM range of the turbo. Um, <laughs> when's the next happy hour? You want it to pull the front tire? Just put a lot of gear in it. Keep your truck in a heated garage. Well, it, it's in California. It's it's not like it's 10 degrees. It's, it's probably 50. It's not the side post battery. It's the bulbed cable end of the rubber. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any of that. I've cleaned a bunch of that away. And um, it's not a... It's not that connection. I, I'm certain of it. That's what we're thinking. It might have an intermittent short somewhere. And you have 88 to 92 millimeter turbos. Those are big. How much would a 600 horsepower kit for the big block be? I don't know. I don't know what they're what they charge for that. I don't know what the porting of the head is and stuff. Blinker fluid. The 
the boutique billet compressor wheels. I, I don't know, Kyle. I don't know. Um, I, you know, you just have to do a back-to-back -back testing on the turbo. I can tell you that when I ran a CX Racing 76 millimeter and ran a Precision 76 millimeter turbo, and honestly, they weren't even the same size wheels, but they both called them that. Um, there was a huge difference. I mean, it was 500 horsepower difference between those two. But I don't know if the wheel is the same size, the inducer and the exducer and the and the the compressor housing is the same. I don't know how you get that much of a change from a billet wheel design change. I'm not saying you can't. I just would like to see it. Uh, own the battery cable. Yep. Motor Trend articles. Yeah, it's funny that they call them Motor Trend now because for when I was doing articles, Motor Trend was like the wine and cheese crowd. After the Nova, do you think you'll get another test car? I have the, the Yomni GLH uh, that we'll do, be doing a bunch of testing with. I don't have any big turbos. When the engine is cranking on started up, have a voltmeter on it. Should not drop below nine and a half volts. There are aftermarket lug bolts for side posts. Yep. It, it, it could be all that stuff. And on that note, it is time to go. <laughs> no more Richie after dark, but I'll see you guys all in the morning, hopefully, with, with my truck that started. <laughs>